And so we begin this video in Greenfield, Indiana. And boy, is it ever a cold and windy day here in East Central Indiana. Burr. So proud to report to you that the Pizza Hut from my youth is still a Pizza Hut. Will you look at that? Now that doesn't happen every day everywhere anymore. I was just down in Cocoa Beach, Florida, visiting a Pizza Hut that was sitting abandoned, and a majority of them are, or they have been repurposed. They're different businesses. But I'm showing you this one because I'm remembering, I was passing by and I'm remembering the time of my fourth grade birthday party, which went down right inside this Pizza Hut. I remember it so well. I was wearing an Eric Cartman South Park t-shirt, and I remember receiving Metallica's Reload album. Yeah, that was a great birthday. And afterwards, we went down the street to the local theater, and we watched Lost in Space. That was 1998, my friends. A long time ago. It's good to be back home again in Indiana. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome if it's your first time. I know what you're thinking. It looks like Michael Myers' house. Very similar, but we're really far from Pasadena, California. So, I'm in town for Thanksgiving. We just had a great Thanksgiving, my family and I, back over in Newcastle, where I was born. And today, I'm heading over to Indianapolis. Thought I'd fire up the camera, because there is a Star Trek convention happening over there in Indy. Starbase Indy, that's what they're calling it. And I said, you know what? I'd like to go check that out. Now, I'm not the biggest Star Trek fan of all time. I do like Star Trek. I'm more of a Star Wars guy. But I do enjoy some of the Star Trek films. And I love conventions. And this thing's going down, so... I thought I'd head over to Indy and check it out. Starting here at the home of the Hoosier Poet, James Whitcomb Riley. Right here, I grew up here in this area, actually about eight or nine years of my youth right here in the Greenfield and New Palestine area. New Palestine, a small town just south of here in southern Hancock County. Thought we'd start out here. This is James's home right here. He lived here up until 1916 when he died. Now, you, you probably never heard of James Whitcomb Riley, but you have heard of Little Orphan Annie. James actually wrote Little Orphan Annie, which inspired, would later inspire the Broadway play. And Little Orphan Annie was actually an orphan that lived here with James. Just a fun fact right here. I thought we'd start out a little different. We're heading over to a convention, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let's head over there now to the convention center. It's at a hotel. Actually, a hotel we've been to before. All right. Well, oh, wait. James is right over here. Hold on. Right here. You know, James, two of my favorite lines, two different poems. Let's see. From Little Orphan Annie. The godlins will get you if you don't watch out. Written just like that in the Hoosier dialect. The Hoosier poet. And also a very relevant poem right now. The Frost on the Pumpkin. That's an old. That's an oldie right there. So Google James Whitcomb Riley if you want to check out more of his works. Just like he has in his hand right there. All right. That being said, less talk, more rock, Star Trek fans. I am Tampa J. There's much ahead. Oh yeah, here we go. We have reached today's event center for Starbase Indy here at the Marriott on the east side of Indianapolis. Actually, I will boldly go once again where I've gone before. It was just here back in June for Days of the Dead Indianapolis. And now, going back inside these doors, for a Star Trek convention. Just love conventions. Good to be back here, and it's warm. Oh, look at this fireplace. Now that is awesome. Ooh, I'm gonna get closer. I took off my coat, because I didn't want to carry it around all day inside of the convention center. Ooh, that feels good, all right. Where's this convention at? Not too many people here yet. It just opened. It's from 10 to six today. And these two signs point the way to the actual convention. Check it out. United Federation of Planet Nine. Starbase Indy established 1988. This convention's almost as old as I am. And I have no idea what we're about to get into today. This is my first convention of its kind. 
I couldn't find where to even buy a ticket online, so I'm hoping I just walk right up and buy one, but yeah, on the Starbase Indie website, I didn't see where you could buy a ticket, or maybe I just didn't understand how to. But here we go. Okay, so on the door posted before the registration room, it says day badges are unavailable. The Starbase website says that day badges can be purchased, but this is incorrect. We apologize for the convenience, and it looks like here's the prices for today. Right there. Ooh, 50 bucks. Okay, so I'm all paid up. 50 bucks for my lanyard here, my badge, and also I had to show my vaccination card and masks are required at this convention and I've got my program there's all kinds of things going on as far as science fiction and science here at Starbase Cindy I'm excited to go check out the vendor room which is right here in Liberty Hall and of course we have a lot of Star Trek merchandise available here at this booth here's a relic a 20th anniversary Spock wristwatch look at that 1966 to 86 Star, Star Trek 20 quartz LCD watch 15 bucks okay this is tempting I had this when I was a kid micro machine Star Trek collector set with all the the ships and vessels there is a bundle of starships at my feet down here look at that a ton of them not just Star Trek all kinds of things you got the Tasmanian devil and you got Mr. Bean there, Roland Atkins. And a whole case of original Star Wars figures right there. Some good ones in there too. Now look over here, there's a bunch of Klingons gathered around. And I found an opportunity here. Now this is the best photo opportunity I've seen in a long time, but I'm kind of feeling a little, a little threatened. You guys are intimidating. Oh no. Yeah, you do. Does anyone speak Klingon here? No chat? What, what's yes. that mean? It means yes. Yes. Oh, of course it does. Uh, yes, uh, Klingon Assault Group Global Fleet uh, is our uh, international uh, membership uh, between Iceland to Australia. And on our rosters, we have approximately 120 members. And uh, they're spreading the word about being Klingon, either in their costuming, uh, learning the language, uh, belonging to online groups, and of course our online presence in Star Trek Online, uh, the uh, computer game. That's awesome. That's impressive stuff. It's it's really exciting. We cling on to all parts of this planet. You cling on to all parts of this planet. I love the pun. That's a great one. All right, we've got Gorn over here, and he's got a shirt on with his own face even. It says, boldly go, and I just meant met these gentlemen you guys are boldly go right yes, sir. punk rock band punk rock. where are you guys uh where are you guys from uh alpha quadrant west virginia oh okay all the way from west virginia to indianapolis this weekend oh yes you guys playing any shows yeah we're playing here uh tonight at eight at uh in the main room on the bridge we played here last night it was awesome it was a great show tonight awesome and is your music available um other than right here in front of me everywhere. anywhere else everywhere you got you got itunes you got spotify, spotify. ITunes, music youtube i really like the Band cover camp. art here very cool so check out boldly go yes, sir. I, i'm a big fan of the punk rock music so that's cool all right so i'm not going to be able to stay till 8 p.m to see boldly go tonight so i got a cassette tape i will take this back with me to tampa and listen to this and there are a few actors here today from Star Trek, including Tracy Lieutenant J. Coco from Deep Space Nine. Actually, I believe she was in several of the Star Treks, even in the next generation. All right, I am currently on the bridge of the Enterprise. Check it out. There's the captain's chair. This is where they have the panels. Currently not happening right now. There was just a panel inside here. But this is the room where they're going down. Here's something you don't see anymore. TV guides. Here's some Star Trek TV guides. Oh, is that? They're signed. Got a Patrick Stewart signed one right there. The card, 125 bucks. Here's a classic Star Trek figurine, Leah. Card stock even. Look at her, 20 bucks. That is nice. 
And Captain John Luke Picard, still in the card stock. 15 bucks. Ooh, that's tempting also. Mmm. There's all the rest of the figures, Star Trek figures for this series there on the back, including the die cast USS Enterprise Starship and the phaser. And here's the die cast Enterprise, and it is heavy. Look at that, 40 bucks. It's got the whole series here. Hey there, kid, I like your saxophone. Um, now I'm on the Mars Ascent Vehicle Project at NASA, NASA Marshall. It's, it's, the, it's a rocket that's about nine feet long, and it's gonna ride on a JPL rover. Y'all know about per Perseverance, right? Perseverance is collecting soil and rock samples. Well, who's gonna get it back to Earth for us to look at? <laughs> so, that's the project I'm on. Um, JPL is sending another rover over, rover over, <laughs> with the Mars Ascent vehicle, which I'm working on. And that, that vehicle is going to launch from the surface of Mars with the soil and rock samples into Earth orbit, deploy them to another vehicle that the Europeans are building called the Earth Return Orbiter, Earth Return Orbiter, and that orbiter is going to bring the samples back to Earth, and then um, I think it rendezvous with some other vehicle to actually land them. So this will be the first vehicle to fly off of the surface of Mars, but like the size of the little helicopter that Perseverance has, but actually to get out of Mars orbit and to bring anything off the surface of Mars. And so it's a big deal. No one's flown a rocket from another planet before. <laughs> At least not humans that we know of. So um, we're gonna do a flight test of that first on Earth. And we're trying to mimicate the Mars conditions as best we can with certain parameters. And so I I'm working on that and that's gonna launch in uh, November, December of 2023. Look next, Trondland. What can I do for you today? I, I don't speak Klingon. You're gonna have to translate. Well, hi, I'm Jen. I'm the Klingon pop warrior. I sing pop and rock songs you thought you knew in their original Klingon hole. That's awesome. And I am here at Starbase Indy to perform this afternoon. All right, what time are you performing? 4 p.m. 4 p.m., okay. <laughs> Where do you normally perform if you're not at a convention? Honestly, I mostly do conventions and occasionally okay. a special event here and there. Um, that's, I like going where my nerds are. So. Uh, I, hey, I, I'm a big nerd right here. That's awesome. So I came to the right place. Is there somewhere online we can find, uh, find your material? You can find me at KlingonPopWarrior.com. All right, check her out. We've got a mishmash of action figures here. We got Battlestar Galactica in there. And look, it's the skipper. Gilligan's Island, that is cool. I've never seen a skipper action figure. Hey there, buddy. And hey, one of my favorite Star Trek films, The Voyage Home, filmed in San Francisco. And check this out, the Cinema Collection Trader trading card set, still in the box, Skybox, a complete collector card set. I know you've had a very illustrious career, and if there's any part of your career that you enjoy more than others, yeah, I'm, a, I'm interested in doing stories. So sure. If there's any uh, person yeah. or artist that you've worked with that you enjoy more than others that made it pleasant to work, or any uh, set or environment that you have for people. Yeah. yeah. First person uh, I can think of is Henry Fonda. Uh, he was, he played uh, the grandfather in my other television series, Family, and he was remarkable. He was almost completely uh, deaf, but he had eyeglasses with, if you, some of you may remember, hearing aids in the stems. So when he was wearing his glasses, he could hear you perfectly, but he didn't wear his glasses when he worked. So he would read lips, and if you didn't, if you didn't remember your dialogue and, and, and say exactly what was written, it completely threw him because he would not only read your lips, but he remembered what was written, so he knew what you were supposed to say. Quite a remarkable guy. Well, we were shooting in a park one day. It was very, very windy. And uh, uh, some distance away, there was a family, a large family, trying to get their barbecue started so that they could have a picnic. And the wind was not going to uh, allow this. And so uh, Henry Fonda uh, noticed this, and he said to me, hey, Gary, come here. 
And we walked over to this family and Henry Fonda started their barbecue for them and roasted their hamburgers and, and grilled their hamburgers and hot dogs for them while we had a break, we were on a break. I just thought that was remarkable. This hero of mine, who uh, uh, magnificent actor, and uh, he he was still a human being. He uh, he didn't do it as a lark. He just did it because he saw some people needed some help. Well, so many actors and actresses got their start on that particular show. Tommy Lee Jones uh, was uh, a guest star on the show, involved with the uh, Meredith's character. Shelley Long. Michael J. Fox, uh, I, I, I can't remember everybody, Henry Fonda, I already mentioned. Uh, but there were an awful lot of really wonderful people who came and visited for a while and then left. And uh, they added to the show's uh, luster. It was quite an honor to educate myself just now with these fine folks over here. Now. I, I am blown away. I had no idea about this. So can you explain to me one more time what exactly your fan club is of, the official Honor Harrington Fan Association? Okay, the Honor Harrington Fan Association, or Tierra Manor or Navy, is a fan club based around David Webber's Honor Harrington series, which is a female protagonist going up the ranks of space military through peace, war, peace, and war again. Well, that's awesome. I, I just learned a ton. Having a good time over here. So I've got to, I've got to choose my own. Uh, yep. Yep. I've got to choose my own party, and I, I think someone said to go, go Marines. Yes. Go Marines. All right. So I'm gonna. So which insignia is? Oh, it's on your shirt. Yep. Yes. Right there. Marine Corps is also down there at the end. All right. Cool. And they eat crayons. They eat crayons. Yes. Oh. Okay. When you graduate <laughs> boot cramp, we give you a 64 pack of crayons. <laughs> that, that's awesome. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Done a ton of conventions. This one? It's been one of the smallest ones I've ever been to, but I still had a good time. Met a lot of cool people today. Learned a lot of stuff today, actually. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up right down there. Thank you so much. And if it was your first time, Come on back, subscribe below. Had a good time in there at the Marriott today at Starbase Indy. Glad I came out. I learned a lot of stuff today and got to meet a lot of cool folks. So shout out to all those people that I met today. If you're watching, thank you for the great talks and the camaraderie and the fellowship. That was fun. You guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. And, um, I gotta get out of here soon. I only came up here briefly for Thanksgiving. I had a great time with my family and uh, shout out to them as well. So here we are ending the video and I've gotta get back into my rental car and put a coat on because I am freezing. It's like 30 something degrees out here. I left my jacket in my rental car which is old blue right here. And uh, here I go. So, all right, know you're awesome. Know you're loved and know there's much ahead and I'll see you next time guys here in Indiana, back in Florida, and beyond. Got it. I got some more traveling to do before 2021 ends, so there you go. So, see you next time. Might be in Florida, could be in another state. We'll see, depending on what happens tomorrow and the next day after that. I just go with the flow, I take my camera with me, and I fire it up as much as I can, and I love making videos, so. Appreciate you guys watching from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for always joining me. Rambling here at the tail end of the video. Indiana State flag flying above us. Over my left shoulder to your right. Or wait, yeah, I think that'll work out. Yeah, okay, that's correct. All right, see you guys. There's much ahead. See you next time, Bye bye The Jaybird by James Withcomb Riley. The Jaybird, he's my favorite of all the birds they is. I think he's quite a stylish sight in the blue suit of his. And when he lights and shuts his wings, his coat is a cutaway. I guess it's only when he sings, you know he was a Jay. <laughs>